welcome to official DVSA, driving theory test, updated UK. Question. You're driving on a three-lane motorway. How should you overtake a slow-moving lorry in the middle lane if it's showing this sign? Give one answer. A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry, then overtake on either side. C. Follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway. D. Use the right-hand lane and overtake the lorry normally. The correct answer is A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. If you wish to overtake it, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. Question. Which sign means that the national speed limit applies? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation, you should know the speed limit for the road on which you're traveling, and the vehicle that you're driving. The different speed limits are shown in the highway code. Question. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Give one answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirrors, signal, maneuver routine. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation. In good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign, or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question. What must you do when you see this sign? Give one answer. A. Stop even if the road is clear. B. Stop only if a red light is showing. C. Stop only if children are waiting to cross. D. Stop only if traffic is approaching. The correct answer is A. Stop even if the road is clear. Explanation. Stop signs are situated at junctions where visibility is restricted or where there's heavy traffic. They must be obeyed, you must stop. Look carefully before moving off. Question. What's the reason for the hatched area along the center of this road? Give one answer. A. It marks an area to be used by overtaking motorcyclists. B. It separates the two sides of the dual carriageway. C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. D. It's a temporary marking to warn of the roadworks. The correct answer is C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. Explanation. Areas of hatched markings such as these separate traffic streams that could be a danger to each other. They're often seen on bends or where the road becomes narrow. If the area is bordered by a solid white line, you mustn't enter it except in an emergency. Question. What should you do if you want to overtake a long slow-moving vehicle on a busy road? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. The correct answer is C. Keep
keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. Explanation, when you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see of the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. Question. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce cues. C. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing. D. Use dipped headlights. The correct answer is A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Explanation, at roadworks, and especially where a contraflow system is operating, a speed restriction is likely to be in place. Keep to the lower speed limit and don't switch lanes get too close to the vehicle in front of you, be aware that there will be no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Question. You've stopped at a railway level crossing. What should you do if the red lights continue to flash after a train has gone by? Give one answer. A. Alert drivers behind you. B. Phone the signal operator. C. Proceed with caution. D. Wait. The correct answer is D. Wait. Explanation. You must always obey red flashing stop lights. If a train passes but the lights continue to flash, another train will be passing soon. Cross only when the lights go off and the barriers open. Question. A driver's behavior has upset you. How can you get over this incident safely? Give one answer. A. Follow them, flashing your headlights. B. Gesture to them with your hand. C. Shout abusive language. D. Stop and take a break. The correct answer is D. Stop and take a break. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. Question. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Flash the headlights. B. Select a higher gear. C. Sound the horn. D. Use the mirrors. The correct answer is D. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before slowing down or stopping, Check the mirrors to see what's happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. Question. Which sign means there's a no through road ahead? Give one answer. A. No through road. B. T junction ahead. C. Public telephone. D toilet ahead. The correct answer is A, no through road. Explanation, you won't be able to find a through route to another road. Use this road only for access. Question. Which sign means there's a double bend ahead? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation, triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They're there to give you time to prepare for the hazard, for example, by adjusting your speed. Question. What does this arm signal mean? Give one answer. A. The driver intends to turn left. B. The driver intends to turn right. C. The driver is slowing down. D. The driver wishes to overtake. 
The correct answer is A, the driver intends to turn left. Explanation, there might be an occasion where another driver uses an arm signal. This may be because the vehicle's indicators are obscured by other traffic. In order for such signals to be effective, all drivers should know their meaning. Be aware that the left turn signal might look similar to the slowing down signal. Question. Which road users benefit from Toucan crossings? Give one answer. A. Bus and lorry drivers. B. Car drivers and motorcyclists. C. Cyclists and pedestrians. D. Tram and train drivers. The correct answer is C. Cyclists and pedestrians. Explanation. Toucan crossings are similar to pelican crossings but there's no flashing amber phase. Cyclists share the crossing with pedestrians and are allowed to cycle across when the green cycle symbol is shown. Question. Which is the sign for a ring road? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Ring roads are designed to relieve congestion in towns and city centers. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Cycle in single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed. D. Cyclists must dismount. The correct answer is B. Cycle route ahead. Explanation, where there's a cycle route ahead, a sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. Question. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives the signal? Give one answer. A. Continue ahead only. B. Stop at the stop line. C. Turn left only. D. Turn right only. The correct answer is B. Stop at the stop line. Explanation. When a police officer or traffic warden is directing traffic, you must obey them. They'll use the arm signals shown in the highway code. Learn what these signals mean and obey them. Question. Which sign means there's a humps in the road ahead? Give one answer. A. Entrance to tunnel. B. Hump bridge. C. Humps in the road. D. Soft verges. The correct answer is C. Humps in the road. Explanation. These humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They're usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. Question. Which sign means the end of a dual carriageway? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation. If you're overtaking, Make sure you move back safely into the left-hand lane before you reach the end of the dual carriageway. Question. Why does this junction have a stop sign and a stop line on the road? Give one answer. A. It's a busy junction. B. Speed on the major road is dear strict. C. The junction is on a downhill gradient. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. The correct answer is D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Explanation. Where emerging traffic has a very restricted view of the main road, you may find a stop sign and a solid white stop line. You must stop at the line and then check carefully before you emerge. Question. Which document may the police ask you to produce after you've been involved in a collision? 
Give one answer. A. Your driving license. B. Your theory test certificate. C. Your vehicle registration document. D. Your vehicle service record. The correct answer is A. Your driving license. Explanation. You must stop if you've been involved in a collision that results in injury or damage. The police may ask to see your driving license and insurance details at the time or later at a police station. Question. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Give one answer. A. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. B. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. C. Pull over to the hard shoulder, then remove the box. D. Stop close to the box until the police arrive. The correct answer is B. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Explanation. Lorry drivers can be unaware of objects falling from their vehicles. If you see something fall onto a motorway, look to see if the driver pulls over. If they don't stop, don't attempt to retrieve the object yourself. Pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and report the hazard. Question. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Give one answer. A. Balance the clutch with the accelerator. B. Keep your foot on the foot brake. C. Use the parking brake and foot brake together. D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. The correct answer is D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. Explanation. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake, you can take your foot off the foot brake. This will turn off the brake lights so that they can't dazzle the driver behind you. Question. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all engines are stopped. What else should you do? Give one answer. A. Make sure that an ambulance has been called. B. Move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. C. Stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. D. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. The correct answer is A. Make sure that an ambulance has been called. Explanation. If you're the first to arrive at a crash scene, the first concerns are the risk of further collision and fire. Ensuring that vehicle engines are switched off will reduce the risk of fire. Use hazard warning lights so that other traffic knows there's a need for caution. Make sure the emergency services are contacted, don't assume it's already been done. Question. Why should you switch your headlights on when it first starts to get dark? Give one answer. A. Because the street lights are lit. B. So others can see you more easily. C. So that you blend in with other drivers. D. To make your dials easier to see. The correct answer is B. So others can see you more easily. Explanation. Your headlights and tail lights help others on the road to see you. It may be necessary to turn on your headlights during the day if visibility is reduced, for example, due to heavy rain. In these conditions, the light might fade before the street lights are time to switch on. Be seen to be safe. Question. Which sign shows that you're entering a one-way system? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. If the road has two lanes, 
you can use either lane and overtake on either side. Use the lane that's more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. Question. You're about to overtake a cyclist. Why should you leave them as much room as you would give to a car? Give one answer. A. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. B. The cyclist might get off their bicycle. C. The cyclist might have to make a left turn. D. The cyclist might speed up. The correct answer is A. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. Explanation. Before overtaking, assess the situation. Look well ahead to see whether the cyclist will need to change direction. Be especially aware of a cyclist approaching parked vehicles, as they'll need to alter course. Don't pass too closely or cut in sharply as this could unsettle the rider. Question. You've just passed your driving test. How can you reduce your risk of being involved in a collision? Give one answer. A. By always staying close to the vehicle in front. B. By never going over 40 miles per hour. C. By staying in the left-hand lane on all roads. D. By taking further training. The correct answer is D. By taking further training. Explanation. New drivers and riders are often involved in a collision or incident early in their driving career. Due to a lack of experience, they may not react to hazards appropriately. Approved training courses are offered by driver and rider training schools for people who have passed their test but want extra training. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Contraflow bus and cycle lane. B. No buses and cycles allowed. C. No waiting for buses and cycles. D. With flow bus and cycle lane. The correct answer is D. With flow bus and cycle lane. Explanation. Buses and cycles can travel in this lane. In this example, they'll flow in the same direction as other traffic. If it's busy, they may be passing you on the left, so watch out for them. Times on the sign will show the lane's hours of operation, if no times are shown, or there's no sign at all, this means the lane is in operation 24 hours a day. In some areas, other vehicles, such as taxis and motorcycles, are allowed to use bus lanes. The sign will show if this is the case. Question. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? Give one answer. A. Position your vehicle in the center lane. B. Readjust your mirrors. C. Stay in the left-hand lane. D. Try to overtake. The correct answer is C. Stay in the left-hand lane. Explanation. When you've just joined a motorway, stay in the left-hand lane long enough to get used to the higher speeds of motorway traffic before considering overtaking. Question. What helps to reduce traffic bunching on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Contraflow systems. B. Lane closures. C. National speed limits. D. Variable speed limits. The correct answer is D. Variable speed limits. Explanation. Congestion can be reduced by keeping traffic at a constant speed. At busy times, maximum speed limits are displayed on overhead gant rise. These can be varied quickly, depending on the amount of traffic. By keeping to a constant speed on busy sections of motorway, Overall journey times are normally improved. Question. You're invited to a pub lunch. 
what should you do if you know that you'll have to drive in the evening, give one answer. A. Avoid mixing your alcoholic drinks. B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. C. Eat a hot meal with your alcoholic drinks. D. Have some milk before drinking alcohol. The correct answer is B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. Explanation. Alcohol will stay in your body for several hours and may make you unfit to drive later in the day. Drinking during the day will also affect your performance at work or study. Question. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car arrowed should be aware of? Give one answer. A. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. B. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. C. The black car may stop suddenly. D. The bus may move out into the road. The correct answer is D. The bus may move out into the road. Explanation. If you can do so safely, give way to buses signaling to move off at bus stops. Try to anticipate the actions of other road users around you. The driver of the red car should be prepared for the bus pulling out. As you approach a bus stop, look to see how many passengers are waiting to board. If the last one has just got on, the bus is likely to move off. Question. Why should you reduce your speed when you're driving or riding in fog? Give one answer. A. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. B. The brakes don't work as well. C. The engine will take longer to warm up. D. You'll be dazzled by other headlights. The correct answer is A. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. Explanation. You won't be able to see as far ahead in fog as you can on a clear day. You'll need to reduce your speed, so that if a hazard looms out of the fog, you have the time and space to take avoiding action. Traveling in fog is hazardous. If you can, try to delay your journey until it has cleared. Question. What's the purpose of the yellow lines painted across the road? Give one answer. A. To keep the area clear of traffic. B. To make you aware of your speed. C. To show a safe distance between vehicles. D. To warn you to change direction. The correct answer is B. To make you aware of your speed. Explanation. These lines may be painted on the road on the approach to a roundabout, a village or a particular hazard. The lines are raised and painted yellow, and their purpose is to make you aware of your speed. Reduce your speed in good time, so that you avoid having to brake harshly over the last few meters before reaching the junction. Question. What does it mean if the signs at a bus lane show no times of operation? Give one answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. The correct answer is A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Question. You're in a built-up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? Give one answer. A. So that you can be easily seen by others. B. So that you can go at a much faster speed. C. So that you can see further along the road. D. So that you can switch to main beam quickly. The correct answer is A so that you can be easily seen by others. Explanation, you may be difficult to see when you're traveling at night, 
even on a well-lit road. If you use dipped headlights rather than side lights, other road users should be able to see you more easily. Question. Which sign shows that a tanker is carrying dangerous goods? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Tankers will display a hazard warning plate on the side and rear of the vehicle. Details of hazard warning symbols are given in the highway code. If a tanker is involved in a collision, you may need to report the tanker's hazard labeling to the emergency services. Question. Why should you use your mirrors when you see a hazard ahead? Give one answer. A. Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger. B. Because you'll need to brake sharply and stop. C. To assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind. D. To check what's happening on the road ahead. The correct answer is C. To assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind. Explanation. You should be constantly scanning the road for clues about what's going to happen next. Check your mirrors regularly, particularly as soon as you spot a hazard. What's happening behind may affect how you respond to hazards ahead. Question. At night, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light? Give one answer. A. You're approaching a slow-moving vehicle. B. You're approaching a traffic danger spot. C. You're approaching an organized walk. D. You're approaching roadworks. The correct answer is C. You're approaching an organized walk. Explanation. The people on the walk should be keeping to the left, but don't assume this. Pass carefully making sure you have time to do so safely. Be aware that the pedestrians have their backs to you and may not know that you're there. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Adverse camber. B. Steep hill downwards. C. Steep hill upwards. D. Uneven road. The correct answer is B, steep hill downwards. Explanation, this sign gives you an early warning that the road ahead will slope downhill. Prepare to alter your speed and gear. Looking at the sign from left to right will show you whether the road slopes uphill or downhill. Question. Which type of crossing allows cyclists to ride across, while pedestrians are also crossing, Give one answer. A. Pelican. B. Puffin. C. Toucan. D. Zebra. The correct answer is C. Toucan. Explanation. A toucan crossing is designed to allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross at the same time. Look out for cyclists approaching the crossing at speed. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Be aware of trains. B. Be aware of trams. C. Level crossing. D. Tourist attraction. The correct answer is D. Tourist attraction. Explanation. These signs indicate places of interest, and are designed to guide you by the easiest route. They're particularly useful when you're unfamiliar with the area. Question. What should the driver of the red car arrow do? Give one answer. A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. The correct answer is C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. 
Explanation, some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. Question. You're in the left-hand lane at traffic lights, waiting to turn left. Which signal means you must wait? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation. At some junctions, there may be separate signals for different lanes. These are called filter lights. They're designed to help traffic flow at major junctions. Make sure that you're in the correct lane and proceed if the way is clear and the green light shows for your lane. Question. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? Give one answer. A. You'll be able to turn without stopping. B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. C. You'll have more time to turn. D. You'll use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear. The correct answer is B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. Explanation. When turning right at a crossroads where oncoming traffic is also turning right, it's generally safer to turn behind the approaching vehicle. This allows you a clear view of approaching traffic and is called turning offside to offside. However, some junctions, usually controlled by traffic light filters, are marked for vehicles to turn near side to near side. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. End of bus lane. B. End of motorway. C. No motor vehicles. D. No through road. The correct answer is B. End of motorway. Explanation. When you leave the motorway, make sure that you check your speedometer. You may be going faster than you realize. Slow down and look for speed limit signs. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way. B. No through road. C. T junction. D. Turn left ahead. The correct answer is C. T junction. Explanation. This type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign and road marking that you pass so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. This sign shows there's a T-junction with priority over vehicles from the right. Question. What's a cover note? Give one answer. A. A document issued before you receive your MOT certificate. B. A document issued before you receive your driving license. C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. D. A document issued before you receive your registration document. The correct answer is C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. Explanation. Sometimes an insurance company will issue a temporary insurance certificate called a cover note. It gives you the same insurance cover as your certificate but lasts for a limited period usually one month. Question. Where would you see this road marking? Give one answer. A. At a box junction. B. At traffic lights. C. Near a level crossing. D. On road humps. The correct answer is D. On road humps. Explanation. Because the road has a dark color, 
changes in level aren't easily seen. White triangles painted on the road surface give you an indication of where there are road humps. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck with your test.